Let's hear about um, how you feel about doing this. I think it is wonderful to take away the jacket of the book so you can just get the essence of the bottom line for everybody, especially women. I think there's just an epidemic of poor body image, and certainly for women in my age that are getting older. Oh my God. The things that are you know, said to women, things that have been said to me. I was with a man for six years. Being out in LA, I, we we're both very busy. We never went out. He was five years younger than I. I think he was about 52 at the time. And I said, let's go out and have something to eat. And he stalled. So you know, I asked him a couple more times. And he finally said, no, you're, t you're too old. I don't want to be seen with you in public. Can you talk a little bit about um, what your style says about you? There are times I'll, I'll compare myself and think, oh, can't you at least find a pair of jeans that fit? Because <laughs> yeah. when I was growing up, six feet tall, by the time I was a senior in high school, I had a 34-inch inseam. They didn't have 34. They, you still can't find a 34-inch inseam easily. When it, things don't go to the right place, you can feel quite awkward. I didn't mind wearing men's clothes on occasion, but when that's all you're wearing, I mean, I did not come out looking like Diane Keaton in Annie Hall, trust me. You give up. I gave up and told myself I didn't care. But I did care. There just were no options. Mm -hmm. Perhaps my artistic approach to dressing got stunted. Very sad story. Can you take your shirt off? Sure. Can you talk a little bit about the biggest struggle that you've had that you've turned into a strength? Loving yourself. That was very hard to do. That took intention, practice. That was very hard. The important things aren't changing. I was still in an office. Yeah, I was doing guest star roles. I, I had a star role at the taper out in uh, LA. Rave reviews, but I kept ending back in an office. You know, I mean, that was the day job that went on for decades. And why is this? And why is my weight fluctuating? And and why do I drink too much wine sometimes? And why aren't I sleeping? And the bottom line is, you're not, you're not happy. I found you're not happy with yourself. When I was 40 years old, I started seeing a therapist. The first therapist kept telling me that everything I did was right. And I said, no, that's not possible. <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. Thank you very much, but I'm going to have to move on. So I went on to somebody else. In that therapy, she was wonderful, but you know, we just kept blaming my parents. And then I was very fortunate to meet Terry. I found what's called spiritual response therapy. And he would clear things with his pendulum and his charts on the other mm -hmm. side. Okay, this is past life. No, this is present life. Okay, this is fear of abandonment. Okay, this is fear of unworthiness. Okay, this is toxic shame or whatever. We're going to clear it. The emotions are in the mind. I always thought they're in the heart. They're not. And, it, and at first I, I heard it, and I said, mm, that does, no, I'm in love with this guy. I'm just so in love, that's in my heart. Believe it or not, it's in your head. As of December 18, 9, 2011, I was a legal secretary in Los Angeles. And then I sold my house and I came back here. And three weeks later, I got discovered by the gal at American Apparel. I was outside about 11 o'clock having a cigarette, folks. And she was coming across the street from a restaurant to get a cab. And she just said, you know, you look so regal sitting there smoking that cigarette. I said, I don't think very many people would agree with you these days. And she said, it doesn't matter. You're beautiful. And she walked away. And I thought, Ooh, wow, thank you. I saw her two weeks later in a restaurant around the corner. And we recognized each other and we started talking. Three weeks later, she called me and she said, what you doing? And I had no idea she worked for American Apparel. I said nothing. And she said, uh, why don't you come down to the American Apparel store? We tried on all these clothes, put them on a rack. 
didn't hear from her for two weeks. And then she called me and said, what are you doing this afternoon? Still nothing. She said, well, why don't you come up, let's get some shots. And that was the day the underwear shots were taken, so many shots were taken. But see, I had a lot of blocks to everything. I had a lot of blocks to acting, I had blocks to modeling. It wasn't just enough for me to understand what happened in my past or whatever and the things I was rebounding from in my present life. But I had to clear up some other spiritual, emotional baggage that I was carrying forward from other times. There, I said it. I said it. Because it's real. It's amazing. Okay, can you take off your shoes? Sure. That's incredible. That's some <coughs> story. Can you talk about um, when you feel the most vulnerable? Naked in front of a man. I never know what I'm going to get. I was dressing in moo's by the time I was 23. And one of my friends started to try to get me out of moo's. So he's with his boyfriend in a store one day. We had met on a Saturday, and I, and I was starting to feel good about myself and wearing slimmer clothes. I go and put on a bikini, and I come out, and my friend's boyfriend said, Ooh, honey, you need a leg tuck. I finally stood there one day and said, when are you going to be okay? You've been spending almost 50 years trying to get thin enough. <laughs> trying not to have cellulite. <laughs> Ankles that swell. When are you going to be okay? Wow. And I finally said, today. You're going to be okay today. When was that? When Marsha handed me the lace underwear. When you were doing the shoot? All the time wasted. Caring about this shit. Mm. It's like enough. It's enough. When do you feel the most beautiful? Also when I'm naked with a man. <laughs> ah. thing before I left. I was sitting at my desk and thinking, I should get my hair cut before I go to New York or something. You know, just get it all done before you go to New York. And I just heard this voice say, don't cut your hair. And I, a few years before that, I was, you know, dyeing my hair because I used to dye it blonde. <clears throat> got the gloves on, right? The doctor killed their gloves and you got the dye and you're doing all this stuff. And I thought, oh, I'm so done with this. Yes. So done with this. Age-appropriate hairstyles? Do people realize that before 1920, women did not cut their hair? It's just marketing. It's... Mm -hmm. Why don't... It's just marketing. That's all it is. Last question. Can you respond to the quote, in your body is a good place to be? I mean, it's no. It's not... If I could change a few things right now, I would. But... For the first time, it's like, I'm good this way, too. It's, I'm, you know, I'm good this way, too. So it's OK. Perfect. That was perfect. That was like a masterpiece. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was really amazing. Really? Oh, my god. Oh.